Oh, you're good. Let it rip. Take it hard. <laughs> Thank God. I'm mad though. All right, we're in Dallas on a Thursday and it's a sunny 65 degrees. It's absolutely beautiful. We're on our way to save one of the most iconic cars from the 1980s in Chicago. It's supposed to be 15 degrees in the morning, wind at 15 miles an hour, snowing and raining. This is gonna be one incredible rescue. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. We're in Chicago, we've talked about some of the rental car stuff over the last four to six weeks, how it's gone from 100 to 200 to 400. Last week we paid 500. This week we're in Chicago. This is unbelievable. I have Hertz Gold, I've got my American Express discounts and all that stuff. This is for 24 hours. I can't even make this up. $732.02. It's $21,000 a month. That's a quarter of a million dollars a year to rent a Wrangler. Woo! Get you some of that. If you think that's ridiculous, let me know. And here's the icing on the cake. This Jeep has got 47,872 miles on it. So we rented a almost 50,000 mile Wrangler for $732 a day. Wow. Well, we're here outside of Chicago in Oak Brook. As you can see, it's snowing. So we have 65 degree weather to super cold, fresh snow, it's supposed to snow all night. It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna rescue a really iconic supercar from the 1980s that's been in a garage for 20 something years in a neighborhood that looks really tight in a small garage. So I'm gonna go get some rest. We'll see you guys tomorrow. You ready, What's up, Pete? Good morning. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. Good morning, Zach. So how was your ride? It was great, man. Really? I'm going to tell about last night it started snowing and I was like, I'm going to get my hotel right here. So Kankakee it was. We were watching the weather pattern in the plane last night when I was like, uh-oh. You know, <laughs> it's kind of tough driving the big grid through the snow, but he is professional because you're from Minnesota. Minnesota, hey. Hey, there hey. you go. What are we doing? Biggest rescue of the year, even bigger than the KR Convertible. Really? Yep. Huh. An 80s super iconic supercar part of the pun. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I want to see your eyes when the door opens. Oh, great. This is barn, museum, field. It's actually in a garage in a house in a nice neighborhood, but it's on a lift. It's been on the lift for 20 years, and lift may or may not work. All right, awesome. Ready. <laughs> so, you guys grab your cup of Joe and let's go. This is gonna be an epic one. Sean P. Here's another thing I didn't tell you. What's that? I haven't closed this deal yet. Really? <laughs> what a beautiful day. <laughs> Let's go try. I'm confident I can. Hey, that Jeep's from Minnesota too, don't you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Jeep? Yeah. yeah. Well, for $732 a day, they airlift it to you. Must have. I think helicopters are cheaper now than rental cars. This is a nice neighborhood. Beautiful. This is what you want to find. So like I said earlier, it's been in this garage for 20 years. I'm still intrigued. At least I made it easy on you. I mean, look at the driveway. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> we'll see how perfect I can make that. So we've done fields, we've done barns, we've done everything. Why not a steep inclined driveway with a Look at there, I didn't tell you what it was. What is wow. that, sir? Wow, that is a Coutentage. You're right, love it. Wow. 
Wolf of Wall Street comes to mind right there. there. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Good morning gentlemen. Well, you must be Steve. I am Steve. We'll talk a lot of fun. Nice to meet you, Dennis nice Collins. Dennis. Sean Pettiford. Sean, nice to meet you. Good morning. Zach Corgis on camera. Zach. Oh, nice. Bill, you're the owner? Yes, sir. Outstanding. Well, thank you, first off, for being a caretaker of this fine machine forever. How long have you had? 20 years? Maybe more. I, we don't know. Okay, so at least 20 years. And what's. Uh, Steve, you did quite a bit of research on this car, didn't you? I did. So, I did. you know, at, at first shot, you only sent me a couple of pictures as kind of a teaser. Yeah. It was from the side over here. Yeah. With the cover up. I'm like, it's got the side skirts and the and the straights and the air, the air bridge for the brakes. It's an anniversary car. It's not an anniversary car. Uh, yeah, it's I not agree. an anniversary car. Yeah. It's been built. What year is it? It's 88 and a half. So give us your quick background of what you do here. I know you're a car finder. I appreciate it. So I've been talking with Steve back and forth and Steve has been relaying with Bill on this deal. So he is the actual broker. Bill's the owner. Correct. But we've been talking with a couple months on this deal. Correct. We had, uh, long story short, I had heard a rumor uh, for years this car existed. Somewhere in the area there was a Countach that had been sitting in a garage that Something happened to it mechanically, it's been off the road for a while. Okay. Long story short, a couple months ago, sitting at my dealership, Bill walks in, we just start, you know, talking back and forth and he's talking about cars and he asked if I knew anything about exotic cars. I place a few exotic cars, you know, back and forth, but dealer to dealer, you know, I don't I don't sure. hold them at my lot or anything like that. And I said, Well what about ones that have a couple mechanical needs? I said, Any chance you own the Countach that I've heard rumors about? He's like, yes. Very and then cool. it was after that, he brought me over to his house and the pictures I had sent you were of the car up in the air, under two covers, and all the parts of the car were underneath the car. There's only a few pictures of the car. Very few. Uh, enough for me to be very, very interested in because I'm, I'm trying to finish my 80s trifecta, which is Testarossa, Countach, and then M1. Very so cool. if we can get this deal done, that's where it's going. Very Let's cool. Have you checked the engine number? VIN number, just normal stuff? I have checked the VIN number. Okay. Um, as far as the engine number, I'm not a professional in the Kuntash world, so Pretty easy I do to not check. know where that is. And it's correct, it's right here. Now, when this is in the, okay. when this is in the car, Bill, as you know, it is extremely difficult to see. So once you have the, the whole injection set up on here and everything on here, okay. so this is really lucky that Actually, this is taken apart. So, why did the motor come out? I lost second gear in the trans, and uh, you got to, as you know, you got to fold the engine and the trans to get the trans out. And then I decided I was going to restore it, and I, I got injured. So, did yeah. you did you ever did you ever break the transmission case apart? No. Because usually second gear on these cars is just a pin that comes loose. I tried to find somebody around here that would be willing to fix it, but they don't exist. It's tough. I think the. No, I drove past the Lamborghini dealer on the way here. They want to work on the, the new $800,000 ones. Yeah, they don't want nothing to do with the old one. Huh. Well, I've got a, a good friend of mine that I've worked with since the early 80s who's done all my Ferrari work and Lamborghini work, and he is a master at these. So, fortunately. That's what we, you need. We, we, have, we have a master tech that's work, worked on these since, the, not since 71, okay. but, you know, since the late 70s. It might. It's a big yeah, Mike Luanga at Norwood. This is a big, big project. This has sat long enough that we're going to go ahead and tear them up. Oh yeah. Well, I, I Even though the so. car is very short mile car, yeah, yeah. yeah there's it, it's a tremendous amount of work well, to do that. Yes, it's to leak anyway when you have to wipe it up when you pull it in. <laughs> so what led you to buy a Countach? Was it the the art of the car, or was it the poster that everybody had? Uh, it just was exotic looking, I guess. It's about as exotic looking as you can get. It's iconic. I think I still have one on the wall. Let's get back to this real quick, Steve. Let's, I want to check the numbers of the steering column and a couple of the minor things. Now, it's interesting, as Steve, you seem to be very learned on these cars on the phone, but the anniversary cars, which Horatio Pagani was the one in charge of upgrading the QV5000, if you will. Uh, to me, this is probably, I would rather probably rather have this car than the anniversary car. But the anniversary cars had power windows, power door locks, yeah. 
power seats, and a bunch more body work on them. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, guys out there, I'm not ragging the anniversary car, I think they're outstanding. But the QV5000, which is what we're looking at, this is one of the last ones built. Now, you mentioned to me you think it's one of the last five built. That's, that's what Bill and I kind of figured out. Okay. We think, yeah, one of the last five or six. So this car was on the production line when the anniversary cars were being built. Uh, right. This car was not done yet. So this is a very, very late ordered car. But the neat thing about the QV5000 is it is in fact the fastest Countach built. So you know the, you started in 71 and went all the way to arguably 90, I guess maybe even 91 of the late, late delivered anniversary car. But this was the fastest of all the cars. Is that due to like just less aerodynamic add-ons in the anniversary car or the motor? Or? The anniversary cars were much heavier because okay. of the add-ons. Okay. And, but the fuel injection. So you went from carburetor to fuel injections on this QV5000 car, and they just ran better. And if if you're going to drive one of these, which they are, uh, to me, they're as much of a work of art as they are a car to drive. But if you're going to drive one, this is the one to drive. So I'm pretty excited about finding this car. White and red, pretty stud. Um, Right windows, one must take a break, right? It's only this Absolutely. far. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're not cranking it very far. That's true, you're but, not. Yeah. You don't Bill, what is, it, is it a whole crank or is it just half a crank? No, they're electric. D this is power windows in? I think so. Well, you can look. Uh, I can swear it's crank. I don't think so. I but we'll, we'll, know when we, we, we'll know when we push it out. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I want to, that I really want to see, I had seen the pictures, is the ejection setup. Uh, I believe it's in the blue, those blue, uh, the box, right? Yes, the box, sir. Yeah. No, no, in the blue, these two blue, these two blue bands. Okay, well, what's in, the, what's in this white one? The intake panel. Okay, there you go. I'd love to see that, too. Actually, the intake's really what I need to see. <laughs> wow. How good is that, Sean? That's a, pretty, There's a tremendous amount slick. of stuff just to get the motor out of this car. Holy moly. I don't think you're going to find that swap me. No, you are not. Okay. That's a piece of art in itself. And Steve, you mentioned that Bill has a bunch of records and books and stuff. Bill, can you yeah, show me what you got? Records. Good grief. <laughs> wow. You even have the Alpine stereo file, which these all came with the Alpine, by the way. Factory Lamborghini service manuals. Wow, you spent a lot of time collecting this stuff. Did it come with the car? No. No. <laughs> Does that box go with it too? Oh yeah. Wow. Look at that. Well, Sean, maybe we can figure this one out ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna go with no, that's Mike's wheelhouse. <laughs> what do we hear? We got the wing, obviously. What do we have here? That's the uh, wing. So you bought the anniversary parts too? No, no, the wing was on. I don't remember. We had to take it off because of the trunk lid. So it came with the wing. Okay. And I have the uh, Ural front end I bought okay. with the Carrera lights. So it's supposedly factory. Okay. From what you could tell. So the, that's the US bumper there. Right. And then the other two parts are the Ural, or, you know, Ural front end, which I was going to have put on. Well, I'll go with the uh, Ural for sure. Yeah, can Much you better look at these bunkers on the back. Yeah, the US, yeah, you can eliminate those. Oh my God, that's US stuff's a little bit ugly. What are they and called? I got the original Carrera lights for that too in the, one of these boxes. Wow, this would make a great car. What is it? One last thing, what is that? That's your little present. Does this go with the car? <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, nice. LEDs, too. Original. LEDs. So not only was that one of the most iconic cars on a poster, I guess on a clock. Well, before I talk to talk myself out of this deal, or you get out of selling it, I'll take it from what we discussed. Yes, sir. I, Thank I was, you. Steve made the deal, so you, I'm not going to grind that at all. Thank now, you. we got to get it out of here. Hmm. I guess that's what I'm here for. All right, <laughs> uh, well, Bill, let's do some paperwork. I got my bag. And Sean, you figure it out.
Here's the primary main engine cover. There's the hood, which is tiny. This car is a beautiful shape. The paint's going to probably buff out. And then there's a secondary rear patch the cover that goes right here. So I'm going to put all those in the car. They travel better like that. I don't know where you're going to find that, but original Space Saver spare for a Countach. There's your Lamborghini. Real job done it, John. Doesn't slow. It's about 40 pounds. <laughs> well, it's pretty wide, so I don't want to scratch it. I'm going to have to repaint it if I have to. Take that thing's heavy. That's why people put gear bumpers on their son. Oh, that thing's crazy heavy. So that right there, which is to me it was probably 40 or 50 pounds versus this. So it's the same thing. Which is maybe two pounds. That's a euro. <laughs> That's going on so which car. one do you think needs to go in the car? Well, I mean, that, that is a lead weight right there. The sexier way, I think. So that was the, uh, the US bumpers, which people absolutely hate. So we've got US bumpers and Euro bumpers, really cool. Okay, so we built this, actually James did, to put this motor on, because you see it sits almost flat. And we always put the motors on the tire so it doesn't mess it up. The hoist is going with it, so we're kind of thinking now maybe we lift the motor up, put the tires on there, and see if we can get the whole assembly in there, and just strap it down really, really well. Really the wood, 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 wood. Ready? I got a I got a semi firm grip on this thing. It's wrapped around my wrist, so don't do that. <laughs> first, our first ball. We well, hadn't made it very far. Uh, we, we, bottom, we bottomed out. Bottomed out. We sure. need a little more momentum. We should be okay. I got to move my boards, but I can do that. No, no, no. Let's try to get past this one spot. All right. We'll go. Of course, now, now this rope does nothing to stop it. Okay, but you can yeah, go the other way with it. Around, I'm mean, out putting four sides. It's not that heavy. It's the heaviest thing in the car. Yeah, you're right. I don't know, the rip up is pretty heavy. I do that one myself. I'm not even going to hear the end of that one anymore. Okay, hang on. I'm going to have to move my ingenious boards. We'll winch it in there or just push it on very slowly. If you need me to hit the button on the winch guitar, just let me know. He hates it when I interrupt him. I'll stop doing that. Sean, you need any help? <laughs> That's the it's, it's not swinging either. Okay, we'll move the board. Okay. Get the rope. That's awesome. Okay, come on. We need a big hammer. That's gonna be a problem getting the car in. Great job, Dennis. Look at you. The last one did it, you see that? Yeah, one whack. That's what I'm talking about and referring to. Okay, I like it. We gotta run the winch table with Hey, I'm Rick Bell. Hi, Dennis Collins. Hi, Dennis. Good, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The hard part's in the trailer. So. Should I just jump in this thing and rawhide it down the hill? Probably not, because you can't see out of the back of the Countach anyways, right Steve? That's correct. The, the way to back one up is to open the door and sit in and look back. I think it slides right there. Top or bottom? Uh, the, this goes up. And that's why it's a small wheel with small tires. It's not where you put your Louie? Um, actually, if you read the early on advertisement for these, it says there's no room for luggage, there's only room for a beautiful wife or woman. They did say woman, but I said wife. <laughs> okay, so you want me to just jump in there and steer it? No, I still got the transmission in the trailer. Okay, let's do that. I was wondering how he got it up here. I asked if it was a record, and no. He actually mounted a winch underneath that workbench to the wall and winched his car all the way up the hill in here. We got these chocks. So we're going to work smart and try to winch it down. 
I'd love to just jump in and drive it down, but like I said, you can't see out of it. So hopefully this goes swimmingly. So this is a manual window car, which it would be for a QB5000. This is as far as the window rolls down. So you can reach it right here, grab the crank. Of course, I can't roll it up because it's smashing my arm. That is literally all you get. Pretty cool. So for those of y'all out there that know a whole lot about a Countach, I hope you research it. Yeah, Tube chassis with beautiful aluminum bodywork. This car is actually designed by Gandini for Bertoni. This is not the Horatio Pagani body for the anniversary. This is the Gandini body. All right, let's roll. You think it'll have brakes after 20 years? I don't what do you think? think? So. It'll have some. It's been a climate controlled garage, and I mean, yeah. you have something. Oh, 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 oh. Look how yeah. nice the tags are. Look at that. They're crisp. Like the gauges. Those are as crisp as the gauges in the CJ. It made Zach laugh. Which is not all that difficult to do, but it's difficult to make Zach laugh on camera. Yeah, cool, right? You know what else is awesome? It has keys. Can't tell you how many cars you buy without keys. It appears to have brakes. Looks like I might be driving this thing down the hill. Hey, I'm might not be a good idea, but I think I'm gonna try it. How do I look? Great. <laughs> so a lot of times I'd wing something like this. Part of the pun is this car's got a wing, but we're probably not gonna do that. We're gonna winch it all the way down the hill. All right, Bill, bring her in. So this particular segment, ladies and gentlemen, is safety first. Instead of manhandling it down like we normally do, we're not. We're gonna winch it down nice and slow. Start going down here. Might want to start straightening it out a little bit. There you go. There it is. I think she got bridge. We got it. Okay. I think once we're halfway down, we'll put the shock on it, pull it up a little bit. We're okay. done. Let it go. Or oh, whatever you want to do. Oh, you're good. Let it rip. Take it hard. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, we'll get the race ramps. We'll go forward, get out, out of traffic. We'll put the race ramps down before it goes in. The reason we use windshield tape for this is it doesn't mar or hurt the paint. That's what you use when you're putting a windshield in when you glue a new one in. Not if I could just get it to peel properly. So like I said, we like to put the body panels and the glass in or on the car. It's the easiest way to haul them without damaging them. Tape's cold. And this is why I don't work at the body shop. 
this is the tape's really cold. We'll go. We'll do all these scenes. We'll go up and do the hood, and then while Sean's working on strapping everything down, and then hopefully we'll go to lunch. Thank you for being such a fine caretaker of that car. It's a uh, a lot nicer than I anticipated. It's beautiful. I'm I'm glad you're happy. I mean, the interior is amazing. And Steve, thank you for finding it. Pleasure. <laughs> thank you for coming and getting Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Last question. We're either going to go to breakfast or lunch. If you guys would like to go, that's great. If yeah, not, you're certainly you know, under no pressure. Kind of a little puppy. Okay. Well, I'll you take care of your puppy. How about you? You want to go? I'll tag along if I'm invited. Absolutely. What's your favorite local place to go? Local wise? Yes. Uh, there's a barbecue place, Uncle Bub's, down the street, about 10 minutes. Pretty good. Okay. Otherwise, everything else is a chain. So. I'm in for Uncle Bub's. Uncle Bub's. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes, sir. I'll say Nina. We'll keep in touch. Yes, sir. All right, Steve. We'll see you at Uncle Bub's. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. This is it. Everything else is big commercial stuff. Award-winning barbecue. That's right. They've been around a long time. Uh oh. Watch out for that car. But you know, Steve, that. you're taking a risk bringing some Texas guys to barbecue. You know, you gotta take risks. In <laughs> okay. Life, right? Yeah. <laughs> curious but I'm in. See, curious to see what I've been eating all these years calling barbecue. type of meat you have. So okay, a good starting point would be the sampler platter. It's not going to give you every meat we have, but a good amount of them. All right, let's start with that and add to it. Sure. So we'll do a sampler platter, and all of our dinners come with two sides and a cornbread, so that'll come with two sides. The sides are all right there on the yellow board. Okay, well, let's make sure we get at least one of every side. All right, so, um, so yeah, we can order, like, we can do a, get extra sides, you know, on what, what two did you want for the sampler platter? You pick it. All right, uh, so we'll do baked beans, garlic green beans, and then you just want an extra side of everything else we got? Yes. All right. Uh, I should say. And then for my wife, <laughs> this is what I'm going to eat while we're here. <laughs> I'm going to try your pan seared tilapia. Okay, give me one second. I'm just ringing in these. Uh, hey, that was only appetizers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll hold, because you can make these, oh some of these your sides go. for your other dinner, so I'll hold off to ring in all the other sides. So, what two, so the tilapia dinner, you just want me to pick any other two sides? No, I don't think we need any more sides. Okay. Just as long as you have at least one of every size we can try. Yeah. I mean, the, each dinner is going to come with it, so I might as I mean, just that. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. All right, so you got baked beans, green beans for the first one. I'll do mashed potatoes. And coleslaw for that one. All right. Anything else other than you guys that? don't be shy just because I ordered a bunch of stuff that we're gonna split. It. There's something I miss. I, I, think, I think I'm gonna pick off of that. I mean, it sounds like you got one of every side, one of every meat, right? I mean, yes, sir. What else is there to eat, right? Well, I don't know. We missed something. We must try. Um, mac and cheese for sure. Uh, we got zaccaroni and cheese on the camera over here. How's your mac and cheese? <laughs> mac and cheese is a really all good right, seller. There you go, mac and cheese. We're going to yeah. make sure we have two of those instead of just one. Two sides of mac, all right. I'm trying to see meat-wise if there's anything you haven't gotten. Pork uh, turkey breasts. Our jalapeno cheddar sausage. Jalapeno I could add on sausage. one of those if you'd like. That's a big seller and you don't have that in your sampler platter. Put it on there. And we right. bring in so they want to try all of our meats and all of our sides. They're like the Hummer. Yeah, exactly. Just the chicken with the Dorado version. So I'm going to do uh, an unusual best buy here, I think. Thank you. We have our brisket, turkey, and pulled chicken. Outstanding. Oh, not brisket, bird ends. I'm sorry. Here we are. And we have our ribs and our jalapeno cheddar sausage. All you're missing is beef wow. down there, Dennis. I don't feel rude because I'm going ahead of you guys, but I'll pass it down. So, Can I get you guys anything else right now? 
Well, I want to see the best bite first. I think we're good. All right. Enjoy All right. This. So, I got this. Tilapia. Okay. Barbecue chicken. Barbecue turkey. That's got to work. Sometimes you just got to use your finger. That is a delicious combo. <laughs> now I'm gonna continue that through my meal. Okay, so you think the bird ends the way to go here? I don't know, You're, you gotta try it and see what the best bite is. Try the sausage. You know, their sauce is up. Uh, their sauce is definitely it's more different. like Texas dish than I would have thought. It was more tangy. Sauce is good. It's really good. Thick like I thought. If you're in the Chicago area and you're looking for real barbecue, this is actually real barbecue. The pulled chicken is the bomb. Is it? Mm -hmm. I, know, I like my tilapia chicken turkey combo. It's really working for me. Steve, how about you? Looks like you're a baby back rib dude. The rib, the pork so far, excellent. Looking Good. forward to this turkey. Zach, how's your something? mac and cheese? I haven't tried it yet. We'll try it. <laughs> Should I film this real time? Sure. <laughs> Let me hold the camera. Let's see. This is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Four out of ten. Four out of ten. Oh, uh -oh. oh man. That's pretty rough. Let's see. Gave, he, he, we went last time to uh, Perry's and gave that an 8.75. That's so, just like uh, box. Everything is outstanding so far, but the macaroni and cheese is for kids. It's not for an official. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> no. Anybody that's going to get a loan on that is going to get it from their own credit union. Well, Steve, that was an outstanding recommendation. Happy really you guys was. liked it. Cool spot. So Good Uncle Bub's in Westmont. Pleasure. Which even though we bought the car in the neighboring city of... Downers Grove. Downers Grove. We stayed in Oak Brook. So I'm getting my geography right. Sean, would you hold this please? Because sure, I don't remember. Sure. So this is Kelsey and Zach's newest genius idea at the restaurants we've eaten at with their permission, which they gave it to us. We put this on the front door. So when you come to Uncle Bub's, which is definitely worth the trip, if you want to see the episode, just click on this QR thing, it'll go right to it. So Uncle Bub's in Westmont, it truly was great. We eat a lot of barbecue, we're from Texas, and it was outstanding. Now we're gonna go do the water tower. So it's windy like Chicago, right? It's Chicago wind. We're back from a killer lunch. Windy city, right? It is. Windy city. A killer water tower shot, which we almost lost the drone. Zach did some incredible driving since it's crazy windy. It actually just, for time frame, it took us two hours and 20 minutes to get the car in the trailer. I was gonna take Sean another what? 16 hours to get home? Yes, sir. All right, thanks for being here. See that was a good one. See you tomorrow. We'll see you in Wiley. And we're off. So, Sean, let me see your shirt. Oh, I made this for you. So can y'all do all that? And the subscribe part is for the YouTube channel. See, I didn't have to say it.